Picture two people in a crowded room, and they're on opposite ends of the room, and the room is full of people, and everywhere they turn, they're bumping into somebody. But they don't see any of those people. They don't even notice any of those people. They just keep bumping into people, bumping into people, and all of a sudden, randomly, they bump into each other. And fireworks go off. They're instantly drawn to each other. They grab hold of each other, and they embrace each other, and it's just the perfect match. That's bioorthogonal chemistry. My father is a, was a professor of physics at MIT, but when I grew up, he was in the earlier stages of his career. So he was at work a lot, but he would bring us there sometimes and show us the gadgets, and he knew a lot about building instruments. When our appliances broke, he would take them apart and fix them, and he would try to convince us to help him. Sometimes we did, and sometimes we didn't. But I do remember some days spent under a lawnmower. At the time I moved to the Bay Area, which was in 1988, the difference in funkiness between the Bay Area and the rest of the world was even more intense. And, you know, it had this tradition of the free speech movement and the hippie culture, and the Bay Area struck me as being very out there. And I thought that was cool. I was wrapping up my PhD, which was pretty much in the heart of organic synthesis. And this was in the, the early 1990s, so 1991 or two. And at that time, there certainly was some movement in organic chemistry to try and connect more closely with biology. And in fact, if you asked me what kind of chemist are you when I was in graduate school, I would have said a bioorganic chemist. Not just an organic chemist, but a bioorganic chemist. That was the term we used for chemists that were making molecules and designing molecules, hoping to use them as tools to study biology. Frequently I hear people say to me, oh, you must be such a great role model for the women in your lab. While that might be true, I think it's actually more important and also impactful that I might be a role model for the men in my lab. Science serves as a valid metaphor for many aspects of life. And I think just as we often will take concepts and categorize them as belonging to chemistry, belonging to biology, and then the chemists and the biologists create a tribe around this. And just like those tribes have evolved and the boundaries between them have become fluid and blurred, so too are the boundaries between the sciences. I'm certainly of the mind that the future of the world is in the hands of the people that we're training today, and it gives me fulfillment to contribute to creating the next generation of scientists who can make the world a better place.